Hello class. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you how to look at how the blood flows through the heart. So remember the heart is a pump. So as the heart is pumping the blood throughout the body, um, the heart needs to deliver blood to the lungs to get oxygenated and then deliver the blood to the body to deliver the oxygen and pick up CO2. So there is a definite flow to that pathway. And I'm going to draw it out um, on this slide. But by now, you should have learned the heart anatomy. So you should have learned all the major parts of the heart, all the valves, all the chambers, and all the vessels. Okay, and you should be practicing that. So no matter how you're looking at the heart, you're able to identify the vessels, the valves, the left and the right. Okay. Um, so make sure you're practicing, practicing this, um, labeling the diagrams I provided, but also using the web pages with the practice websites. And I also have a worksheet, and there's a larger version of this also in the, in the module, where you're able to trace how a red blood cell moves through the heart to the lungs and to the body. Okay, so you should be able to label all the parts that the blood cell will travel to. But I also want to spend some time with you to draw a just a stick figure of this flow pathway. Because sometimes when you're working on a test or a quiz or you're even um, taking the NCLEX, whatever, you have a sheet of paper, you can draw it really quickly on the heart and parts of the body so you can trace how a red blood cell um, will move through the heart, through the lung, and to the body. So what we're doing is, remember, we are looking at the circulatory system. So we have the pulmonary circuit, okay, and which is, let me just highlight it quick here on this picture. So we have the pulmonary circuit, pulmonary meaning lungs, going to the lungs. And we also have the systemic circuit, which is pumping to the whole body. So you can see the blood makes almost like these two figure eights as it circulates through the body. So what we're gonna be doing is tracing one red blood cell. So let's say a red blood cell started at number one here. We're gonna trace how that red blood cell will move through these parts of the circulatory system and the circuit. So as the red blood cells move, it's gonna only move in one direction through this circulatory system. Because it's a circuit, I can also start the red blood cell in the lungs, and then, then you need to figure out what, what comes next, okay? I can also start the red blood cell uh, in a, anywhere, really, because it's a circle. I can really start it on the quiz and stuff. That I will be starting at different spots. So you should practice it starting at number one, according to this picture and then the cartoon that I'm drawing. But also, as you practice, start number one at different numbers so you can get a good practice and how to do this. The other thing I want you to mention is that when you're tracing how the blood cell moves through the body, let's say I started at number one. Well, if in the list of items where you're to order how the blood cell will move through the circuit, I might not list all the items. So you might see the next item that the that's on the list is say here at number four, right? So it doesn't matter that I skip two or three, you will just know in the list of items listed, if it started here at number one, the next item then will be number two. And then the next item after that then will be number three. So you'll see as we practice, but as you practice more, um, you wanna make sure you're able to order the flow of the red blood cell. So what you want to do when you're studying for this is that here we have listed about 14, 15 items. So also include the lungs and the body. So include about 15 items. So what you want to do is write each of these items on a little slip of paper, for example. Okay, so maybe you scramble the pieces of paper, randomly pick up a piece of paper. That will become your number one. Now take the rest of the paper and see if you can organize them if, if, my, if I picked up lungs as my number one, for example, well, then you should be able to take all these 
other items and sort them in the order after lungs, right? Because it's a circle. So it's going to come right back, right? So you want to organize that. And then also, you might then, next game that you're going to play is take those 15 sheets, slips of paper, maybe only pick out 10. Put five aside, scramble the 10 pieces of paper, pick up a random one, and then um, organize those 10 items in the order of the flow. And it should always be in that order, even if you skip some parts, okay? The order is still should be uh, what comes next. It's like landmarks. If I'm driving through Phoenix, for example, and I started at number one, well, what's the next landmark? Even if I skipped a couple of landmarks, it doesn't matter. The next landmark should be number two. Okay. So then you can just keep practicing those until you get really, really good at order, ordering. If there's a red blood cell, how does it move through the heart? Okay. And also practice drawing starting at different numbers. But for the sake of being consistent with the lecture, no. And then the practice sheets, I'm going to start number one with the right atrium. Okay, so you practice that first and then start scrambling the numbers and then see how that, how we can practice um, that. So I'm going to draw the picture right here on this half of the slide. And um, I'm going to use abbreviations and the abbreviations are typed off on this side of the slide so you can follow along. Okay, first thing we're going to do is draw a heart. So I'm going to draw a heart. This is a stick figure, so obviously it's going to be easy, easy drawing, simple, that you can reproduce in a few minutes. So um, I'm going to make the left side a little thicker. So the left side of the heart is always thicker because the left muscle, left ventricular myocardium has to pump blood through the systemic circuit to the whole body, to the head and the toe. So that's drawing the left side thicker allows you to see um, that it is the left side. Okay, I'm going to draw the lungs. So I'm going to just use this color here, the lungs here. And I'm going to label it that since this is the left side, we're going to have this is the left lung. And then we have on this side, the right lung. Okay, so now we got all oriented and we can also write head up here and all the tissue in between, head to toe and all the tissue in between. Okay, so and then also the heart is going to have four chambers divided by the ventricular septum. and then the atrial septum. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna start with number one, at, if the red blood cell started at number one, the right atrium. So think of this also like, if you guys watch the show Magic School Bus, if you get converted into a little red blood cell, the Magic School Bus is gonna drive in one direction through the circuits. So what's coming next? What are you gonna cross with that Magic School Bus next? So the red blood cell, is moving in that same way, okay? So we're gonna start with number one uh, in the right atrium. So the red blood cell started here. And I'm gonna use blue for deoxygenated blood. So it's all color coded here. And then red for oxygenated blood. So number one is right atrium, okay? The next thing that is the, the blood is gonna cross is the tricuspid valve, so T, V is tricuspid valve, and number two. Tri means three, so I drew this little three-pronged valve to kind of remind you that it's a tricuspid valve, not the bicuspid valve. It's also called the right atrioventricular valve, so there's multiple names for that. And as three, we're now in the ventricle, so this is the right ventricle, and the right ventricle is gonna push blood through the valve on the right side, and this is step four, is the semilunar valve, but it's the pulmonary semilunar valve or the pulmonary valve, okay? So we are all in the deoxygenated side here. The pulmonary valve is connected to the pulmonary trunk. So I'm gonna draw this. 
And that's step five, which is the pulmonary trunk. Okay, the pulmonary trunk is gonna branch off to the left side. Okay, and that's gonna be away from the heart chambers. So away from the heart chambers is carried through by the artery. So this step six is gonna be the pulmonary artery away from the heart chambers. And then we have left, and then this one's the right pulmonary artery into the right lung, okay? When the blood comes in to the lungs, and this is happening both in the left and the right lung, what's happening is CO2 is being exhaled, and leaves the blood, and oxygen is picked up into the blood. Okay, so you're exchanging the CO2 now for oxygen in the lungs. So now the blood will become oxygenated on both sides, right? So this is happening on both sides, the left and the right lung. And then the oxygenated blood will return to the oxygenated side. So the left lung will bring blood back. Okay, so the right, left lung will bring blood back into the left atrium using step seven, the pulmonary vein. Vein is always bringing blood back into the heart chambers, okay? So this is the left pulmonary vein brings blood back into the left atrium. So does the right side, so it goes behind. So I'm gonna draw it kind of coming behind and coming in to the left atrium. So you can see uh, it's, coming behind the right atrium into the left atrium, okay? So it's coming through that way. So seven is the right pulmonary vein. Even though it's on the right side, it is bringing blood because it's oxygenated into the left atrium, okay? Oxygenated blood goes into the left atrium at step eight. The blood then from the left atrium is gonna go through the bicuspid valve, so two little prong here, but at step nine, there's also another name called the mitral valve or the left atrioventricular valve. So just to remind you, you have the bicuspid valve, mitral valve, and the left atrioventricular valve. So blood now is traveling through this mitral valve into step 10, the left ventricle. So this is the big muscular part of the chamber. So the left ventricle is gonna pump blood through step 11, the aortic valve, okay? So that's the aortic valve, pumping blood into the aorta. So it's gonna get a little busy here. So I'm gonna draw a big vessel that it arches around. So this arch at step 12 is the big aorta, okay? The aorta branches off with vessels into the head, so your carotid artery going to your head, and then it goes behind the heart to come down into the abdominal aorta. Okay, so the abdominal aorta all the way through the abdominal region, and it's gonna branch off into multiple vessels, right? into your, all the way into your toes and every tissue in between, okay? So as it's moving blood from the abdominal aorta to all the tissues and from the aorta to your head, it is de delivering oxygen to those tissue and then picking up CO2. So you bring oxygen to all the tissues of the body and pick up CO2. So now you took that oxygenated blood and now it is deoxygenated, CO2 is picked up. So the deoxygenated blood has to return back to the right side of the heart. So from the top, the head is gonna come in to the right atrium in through 13, the superior, so above, vena cava, and then from the bottom, it's coming from below, so it's gonna come in underneath below, 
into the right atrium. So at 13B, this is the inferior vena cava. Okay, so now we're back at number one in the right atrium. Okay, so you can see, you can practice drawing this um, figure and see how oxygen is being picked up, how CO2 is released from the lung, and how oxygen is delivered to the tissues of the body, and the CO2 is picked back up. So you keep on going through the circuit of gas exchange, delivering oxygen and picking up CO2 um, so that the tissues of the body can take the oxygen, make ATP, do the work that they need to do and survive, and then release CO2 back into the blood so that this can happen over and over again, keeping the body alive and also allowing the body to do work. Okay, so like I said, practice drawing this in order of 1 to 13 for a, a few times, but then also then try to mix it up. What well, if you started at number one in the lung, what will happen next? Okay, so mix it up so you're not always draw, uh, drawing it in the same order. Okay, so practice this a bunch of times. And I have a number of students who did this, um, took this class, have said that this is really, really helpful for them when they need to um, do their tests, when they need to do their NCLEX, or even various certification tests when they're in the hospital. Okay, so practice a lot.